Hey guys, God bless you. I hope that you're doing well. I just wanted to first say, man, you guys are so amazing, man. I love you guys so much. Just hearing you guys, just the last day. I mean, I'm always listening, always having headphones and here and there. And you know the Father always hears, hears everything. But uh, man, you guys are just so amazing, man. Listening to the Spirit of God and seeing the Spirit of God out in the world, man. There's nothing like it. And it's just so amazing. I know I constantly say it constantly sound like a broken record but man it's just it's I just don't even have any words for it and I'm constantly just giving thanks to the Lord and just you know praying and just thanking the Lord God just I I, I don't even know like what to say it's just it's so amazing I'm just so obsessed and listening to you guys man you guys are so amazing um just know that you know that the Lord always hears okay know that he he hears everything and there might be a time and it might seem like you know I, the lord ain't you know might not hear me or he's not hearing me he's hearing you don't worry man you guys are so amazing and uh you guys already know that but uh yeah i just give praise to the lord man constantly uh man it's just true love true family you guys are amazing so i just wanted to continue in matthew chapter 20 and we see that this is where the rich young ruler we had just finished uh, came to Christ and his disciples asked him, you know, well, if he can't be saved, then who can be saved? And uh, we see Christ, as we see, you know, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible because there's nothing that we can do. He already finished it on the cross at Calvary. We just accept, we believe, repent in the heart. And uh, ultimately where he says, but many are who are first will be the last and the last first is just mean there's you know there's no favoritism he's the treasure it's salvation it's eternal life because everything comes with him everything is his and he gives to his people his children and uh their focus their mindset are on the things of this world and instead of the things of god instead of by the holy spirit now granted it hasn't been given to him yet but all that is just earthly things like that's all to come like that comes with it but it's it's to focus on more which is christ and, and things of heavenly and storing your treasures in heaven you know instead of the things on this earth and going after the things of this earth going after idolatry serving after money and loving money instead of going after loving and serving the lord god so we're going to get into a parable and on just kind of transferring it over to obviously the rich young ruler because it's the focus is the riches in Christ. It's life and life more abundantly, but it's everything that's to come, but everything that's to come because of him and, and what he gives to uh, his people. So just kind of following that along because his disciples, you know, ask him, you know, oh, well, you know, who can be saved? And then he tells us, you know, many are going to be first and the first will be the last, last will be the first. So we're going to get right into a parable. And just showing, you know, ultimately it's just by the Holy Spirit and how he died for all. And he's the God that's way out of time, um, died for all the sins of the world. There's nothing that can separate us from him, from his love. There's nobody that cannot come to him at any time. And that's what's amazing because it's not by man's understanding, not by man's work, not by certain rituals, certain things you got to do, be a certain age, go through certain certain steps. No, at any point in life, at any time. Granted, I mean, obviously children, children don't have that understanding till that certain age. The Lord knows the heart, the Lord knows the mind, but the children are the Lord. So even though they're born into sin, they don't have the capability of understanding sin and repenting in the heart until they get to that age. The Lord knows each person's different of the heart of understanding then because he's the true, just, righteous judge. So yeah, just going to uh, jump into prayer real quick, ask the Lord to be with us and just to lift his name up. So, and just to thank him for his scriptures. I mean, there's just so much to thank him for, you know, I just, I guess sit there and just be like, praise him and ask him for glory and ask and thank him for his scriptures and thank him for his ways. And if I don't get into prayer, I'll just pray without actually getting into prayer. So heavenly father, I thank you so much for, for who you are and, and just your ways and your word. And it's just, it's just amazing because jumping into it, and, and just getting to know you and who you are, it's amazing. There's no nothing that can compare to it. There's no 
understanding as as far as the carnal mind, like with time, there's no time in you. And it's just when we get into you and we lift your name up and we grow with you, it, it's almost like getting carried away, but it's not. The world likes to use the term, oh, getting carried away, but I don't find it like that. I, I get carried away in you and that's where I want to be and that's what I want to do. And I just love you. I, I, I thank you so much for who you are, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us, Lord. You are the true bread of life. It's your word. It's you who feeds us, not only physically, but spiritually. We know that the flesh dies, the body dies. We only need that for certain. We keep coming back for that. But you are the one who satisfies us completely, fills us up completely, obviously gives us everything that we need. And I just glorify you that for that, Lord. And I thank you for your word, Lord. You are the true living word that speaks to our heart, speaks to our soul. And your word is perfectly preserved and you have allowed us to have this. You've allowed us to come together, to grow with you, to know about you. It doesn't matter if it's by ourselves in groups, Lord. It's your spirit and it's your ways and how you grow and how you let us grow together. And just how you're at work in the world with your people. And it's just amazing, Lord. And I just love you so much. And I thank you for this time. And just ask you that you'd be with me. Ask you that you'd be with us, Lord. Speak to us. You know, I'm just a vessel, Lord. I'm not worthy to, to speak your word and, and to even uh, speak your name. And just pray and ask that you would speak through me. Uh, just help give me understanding. Holy Spirit, please help me to stay focused. Please help us to stay focused. Please help us to take anything it is that you want us to take out of this. Only you can truly speak to our heart, speak to our soul. Only you can apply it to each person individually for what they're going through, but also apply it to the bigger picture of what's going on in the world. And only you know how to speak to uh, your people and to each person and to, to speak to the heart, Lord. And I just lift your name up. I thank you. I thank you so much for your children. I thank you so much for the family. They're so amazing. You're so amazing. I love you so much, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for, for being here. And thank you for your word, Lord. You're so amazing. I love you in your holy name. Amen. Right on. So we see it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. So this is his, obviously, kingdom of heaven. And obviously, I like to look at his Christ. Christ is the treasure. Christ is the kingdom. He, it's his kingdom come, his will be done. It's now his. We're now going and, and following him, working for him. And it's those by, you know, by the gospel and those who, which are all of us, even those who teach, those who preach, those who know him. And, and that's what it is. It's just sowing seeds and seeds of that, that word of God, however it is that we apply it, whether it's through work, different conversations, whether it's through family, whether it's being actual actually called to preach and to teach, whether it's with the children, whether whatever it is that the Lord has you doing, you now are are producing that fruit. It's not that Holy Spirit. You work for him, you serve him. And I don't even call it that because it's a get to. That's what it is. It's it's not He's the one who finished the work. It's all done in him. Everything was, we don't, we look at the way the world looks at it is not how it it's, should be before sin. It's not how the Lord sees it. It's a get to. And uh, so he goes out because it's his. He hires, he chooses. Many are called, few are chosen. It's those who accept. I mean, nobody's going to want to work for somebody if they don't want to, you know, if they don't want to work and, and work for the gospel and serve the Lord. And, and do what he has called them to do, then, you know, they don't want to. Um, but it's the seed, it's the word, it's the good news, because he, the gospel, obviously, but he is the word. So by him taking that word, Christ, the living word, the gospel, the good news, and throwing it out in the world, just like the uh, planting seeds, that's ultimately what it is. It doesn't matter where we're at in the world, where we're at in life, what we're doing, do conversations, if somebody needs prayer, if somebody needs help, you know, you, it's just spreading the good news, spreading the gospel, you know, praying for others, handing out tracts, however it is, you know, helping children, whatever it is, you're planting seeds and, and ultimately serving the Lord. And it's, it's a get to because it's not looked at as, as work because it's not, it's, it's, it, he's the one who finished the work. It's not, it's not to be looked at as, because the way the world does it, if you're at work working, I mean, everything you do is work. You go to move, you're, you're working. The, the idea of, of work and how the world does it, you would be working while you're 
working for the Lord. It's just not looked at as working for the Lord because it's not work. The world's term of work is a, is a, a cursed way, if you would, of looking at work. True working for the Lord is serving Him. It's a get-to. And it's life. It's life. Instead of pu putting poison out there, instead of going out and, and throwing duds or not even throwing seeds, you're now serving the Lord because and, and, and planting seeds of life. And it doesn't matter what you're doing throughout the day. You're now uh, serving and, and walking in life. And uh, I wanted to see too because... said, okay, with Peter, see I've left all to follow you, therefore what shall we have? Okay, sits on his throne, right here, okay, so he left, notice they left, they went, left the family, but even the disciples, the disciples who were standing right there, the rich man walked away, but the disciples who left everything, you know, family, their job, everything to follow after the Lord because, I mean, there's so much to take out of that alone. I'm just trying to focus on this and just to show, like, that's what it is. You serve life. You work after life. But however it is that the Lord has each specific person doing it, doing what they've been called to do. It says, now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day. He sent them into his vineyard. So you see the wages. The wage doesn't change. A denarius back in the day, you know, that's the idea. Pay for your housing. Pay for food. Take care of everything. And it's not even be looked at as what we'd obviously look at work today. You're serving the king. You're working for the vineyard. You're planting seeds. And it's just to be looked at as, you know, what's to come and what it was before sin. But also how how it is now today in preaching the gospel and sharing the good news. So we sent them into his vineyard. Because this is his. It's all his. Even though it, it even though the devil is the god of this world for the time being because it's been given to him, it's all still the Lord's. So all all agreed, right? And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So a place where you can buy, sell, and trade. A place where there's heavy traffic. A, a place where a lot of people go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's work, even handing out tracks. Um, I mean, you can apply it to anything, honestly. Even just the cubicle and the person next to you or the janitor, you know. Um, but the third hour obviously could be looked at as like six in the morning. But how about even when Christ gave his life? Because it's the finished work of Christ on the cross that now go into his vineyard, into life, and plant seeds for the gospel. And he had given up his life, given up the Holy the Ghost, so that we can now inherit and be a part of that. Just an idea. Um, so then now, working for them, and, and he goes, he, he chooses, but also what they're going to be doing. So they're standing idle, and that can be looked at as being tossed like to and fro by different gospels, different doctrines, not really knowing what to do. Here's life going on about around them. So many people, so many transactions, and so much stuff that they could be doing, but the foundation isn't right. They don't work for the Lord. Even though they're in the marketplace and they could be standing idle, you don't necessarily have to be, it could be idle at heart. I could be moving around in the marketplace and my heart could be idle. It's just like I could be serving people poison and not life. Or, you know what the Lord has us doing for the time being, not to take away from before the fall, work before the fall and what's to, you know what's to come, because it's not to be looked at as the same. Um, being tossed to and fro, but like so much like life, people going around and you don't, you can't serve them, you can't help them because you don't have life, you don't have the. Uh, foundation, you don't have Christ, you're not working, working, serving him, if you would. How much the opportunity, right? But that third hour when he gave up uh, the ghost after he had died, now it's the good news. Christ came, died for our sins, was raised after three days, and 
It's now salvation for all who believe and call upon him. So now you can serve him and, and now you can um, uh, stock, stock life for him, you know? Give him life. You don't even sell him. That's what it is. It's a marketplace. You just give it now. People, other people are buying, selling, uh, scamming. Here you are just handing out life now. It now actually means something, you know? And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. So whatever is right, it's all his. And that's what it is. It's, it's having the foundation, having Christ first, the treasure and everything else. It's just like in the garden. You have the tr uh, tree of life and then everything else that comes with it. Just stay away from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But they, it's like having a giant Christmas tree, all this pagan ornament they'd rather go after what looks good instead of what they've already had and what they know is right which is life go into the vineyard so obviously his kingdom come his will be done just to apply to obviously satan is the god of this world for the time being it's still god's world and he's still in control he's just allowing it to happen because it's men it's free will men has given it over to him that's what they want okay um but for the time being but it's all still god's the difference is is you now work for the landover you now work for the king of kings so it's the vineyard and you're planting seeds now in the vineyard because it's all still god's the difference is is you now are stamped with the true and living god you're now giving life instead of selling and, and, and death, you know? So go into the vineyard, whatever's right, I will give you. So they went and it's, it's him. He's the foundation. He's everything that right. It's right. It's life. Having him first, everything else comes with it. And that's obviously not to take away from sin and from the world. It's just what to, what's to come. So they went and it says again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and he did likewise so even when he died resurrected and or at at work in the world even today the last hour or about the 11th hour he went out and found others standing idle how about the thief on the cross that the last hour the very last hour thief on the cross found him standing idle who want you know who it's free. Who wants to? Who wants the life? Who wants to serve? Get to serve. You want to sit there and have poison and, and work by the brow, sweat of your brow? Or to have the idea, obviously, not taking away from that because there's nothing wrong with that. Um, obviously. Work with your hands, you know. Get, you know, that's what it's all about. But for now. But the idea is now you, you work life and it's life more abundantly and it's no longer going to be cursed and you you now have a different intention and heart but obviously what's to come just like how it was before the fall but in time too, think about that too and christ gave his life died buried resurrected and even the thief on the cross but how um even just the last hour because even when you go when you go to the third hour obviously that's different from the 11th hour because Christ, you know, dying at the third hour, how can that be the 11th hour when the thief is on the cross? The idea of the 11th hour is just last minute. Like, last minute. Somebody at the last, even just the last point of their life or, you know, what it takes. But just putting that in the idea of a thief on the cross, even though it would, would normally be about three when obviously Christ died. It's just last minute. Anybody, you know. Somebody in life who didn't realize, you know, what they were called to after 50, 60 some years doesn't matter. You realize it now. There's no time with God. His ways go beyond our ways. Got it now. Awesome. Don't who cares what the world says? Who cares what the world thinks? Look at them. You want, you want to go after what the world thinks? Please give me a break. We can, we can do that all day. Yeah, let's do it. You know, who cares? You know, Really, you want to go with what the world thinks? Notice how everybody's standing idle until life comes to them, until they're called, until they've been born again and a part of the vineyard, true and living God, a part of the vine, because Christ is the vine. That's what it is. It's grafted in, being born of the Holy Spirit, now hooked up right to the true vine. 
So he went out about the eleventh hour, even just the last minute too. He went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? And I find that's cool because God can obviously do what he wants, speak to whoever he wants, but also his sheep hear his voice. So they were called and they understood. And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right you will receive. And I like to think of this too, is that the Lord will use anybody who wants to. I mean, he doesn't need any of us. He will, you, whoever truly wants to serve him. Oh man, he, he loves that. You know, like there's going to be so much for people who want to and that's the thing. You'll always be able to serve the Lord. There'll always be something that you can do and do for him. And it's amazing. It's because it's just a reflection of how it's, it's infinite. It's never ending. It's the alpha and the omega. It's life and life more abundantly, more and more possibilities instead of the same old, you know, thing. And it's now life. It's now you can, you know, do that same thing, but you take life with you, you know? For those who are called and given time, obviously, that's not what the Lord's going to have you doing, maybe for that specific time. But each person's different. Each person's called for something different. But the Lord will have, uh, if that's something you truly want to do, obviously, yeah. And it doesn't matter what you do. Go to him, you know, ask. So doing because no one hired us. Um, also, you know, nobody wants them. I look at that too. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants to hire them. Nobody wants patience with them. Nobody wants to look at their resume. How about what if they have a past criminal record? Nobody wants to bother with them. Well, guess what? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords does. He says, you also go. Because it's a reference of him dying for them too. And he didn't come for the righteous. He came for the lost. He came for the sinners. He always has a way. He always has a place. There's always a spot in the heart. He died for all. The lamb, behold, the lamb, John says, behold, the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. So you also go into the vineyard. Also, boom, you're also born again. Because if you accept, that's ultimately what it is. Well, you know, nobody, life, you know, and, and nobody wants me. And, and there's nothing here. And, and um, I don't have anything to serve. Nothing going. Boom. You know, calling out to the Lord, seeking the Lord, obviously in the marketplace, but the Lord coming to you and then boom, salvation, you're saved. You're now child of the living God, life, life more abundantly. You now have, you know, it's just like everything, an, a brand new creature, a brand new creation, all things have become brand new. So you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. So even them too, it doesn't matter. 11th hour, doesn't matter what they've been through, doesn't matter what they've done. All is theirs as well because they have the treasure. They have Christ. He is everything. Everything is his and he gives to who he will. So it says, when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And obviously, too, to be looked at, it could be judgment, you know, even when the books open up in the Bema seat or however you want to look at it. But even those, you know, maybe those who died first, maybe those who accepted last, I don't, however you want to put it. But the idea is it's, it, it's the same. They work for the denarius. It's Christ. It's all, he is the treasure. It's, it's, you know, they are, he already had everything. It's just like the uh, prodigal son. He already had everything. I think that's what, don't they, that's what they call it, I think. I think that's what it's, the prodigal son. I apologize if that's not the right term for it. The, uh, the, um, you guys know the, the parable that I'm speaking to. I apologize. Let me see real quick. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything too. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because what we're going to see, if we get there, yeah, the love of many waxing cold. Okay. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard called the sewer, called the laborers, given their wages, beginning with the last to the first. Okay. When those who were came were hired about the 11th hour, they received a denarius. So also even just the last one, you know, and I don't know if, you know, sometimes you've seen that if 
for example, if you're having like a work orientation or if uh, you have like a work meeting or something like that, people line up and the first ones come in the door are lined up, well, then they all go to leave. Well, that, that those how they're lined up, it's the last one that's going to be the first one to leave. So it's kind of kind of like an idea just how it's like lined up and how it see that there's no difference. It's just the one whom they uh, it's just the one who came in last. It, that's the idea of it. It's just how they perceive it. How are they perceiving it? Oh. Well. Who, who is... He just came in here. Why does he... You know, why does he get to go first? He or she get to go first? Who are they? I've been here, the, you know, whole time. That's what I want. Haven't you been noticing my work? Like, e easy. Okay, just... We'll get there, man. Like, don't you have patience with the Lord? Lord knows I, I need... Uh, and have needed to for sure. Um, so when those who had come who were hired about the 11th hour, they each received a denarius. And that could also be to, boom, the last one come in. Okay, come here. You're, you get it first. Well, why do they get it first? And what do they get? Why do they get the same? So the idea, the focus is not on the king, not on salvation, not on the fact that the brother came in salvation is found but on them what do they get the idea is on the treasure not on the actual gospel and 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 having a brother in in there being saved a brother or sister it says but when the first came they supposed that they would receive more so they just already had an idea that they received more because they had every, they had everything they weren't satisfied weren't satisfied wanted more looked at and the idea of looking at others looking at other people who are saved and what and or what somebody else have and oh there's you know i they're saved too huh or oh they share the idea is the heart is wicked they don't understand completely the good news they don't understand and know the the one whom they serve and work for and they want more they're not satisfied even though they have everything even though they agreed to work for the same thing which that denarius would pay for everything but that's just that's just for the marketplace that's not even that's just the idea to point out of 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 just for a short period of time that's not the bigger picture they're not seeing it they're not seeing the bigger picture remember just like in the garden it, it's the tree of life and everything else the idea is the tree of life bread uh manna water everything housing he is the the housing he's the tabernacle inside of us it's it's rest and then everything else but they're not seeing it they want it now they're focusing on well, what did, you know what does so and so have what do they have well i want it now i'm not seeing it easy because it's showing the heart and it's showing the true intent of what they wanted all along and that's how the lord knows how to do it he knows how to go about that have people do certain things like that to show the true intent of their heart but just grace and how about just grace alone and salvation and being happy you know that one came to salvation okay when the verse came they supposed that they would receive more and they likewise received each a denarius and when they had received it, they complained against the land over. So they had everything. They had been given it, had the treasure, had life. And they're compl complaining against the landowner. Saying, these last men have worked only an hour. So the idea is they're tying in what they get to do for the Lord. How they get to forgive. How they get to walk in mercy and grace and know the Lord as an act of work. As an act of how the world looks at it as the intent of their heart, which was never actual, truly accepting salvation and grace and letting the Lord truly work on their heart or being satisfied with what they had. These last men have only worked for an hour and you made them equal to us who have been born the burden in the heat of the day. You made them equal to us. Hmm. That's another thing. Thinking they're higher and mightier, thinking they're elite, thinking they're a special uh, select group. Um, just because they're the children and descendants of Abraham, which it's not, doesn't give them the out. Because they've borne the burden in the heat of the day. Because the idea and the focus is they're putting their the uh, glory. They're putting the focus on them instead of the one who hired them, who actually bore their burdens. 
who actually took the heat of the day for them, but the judgment, the wrath for them, but the focus is on what they can get. The focus is on having treasure of this world, not realizing what's what's to come, but having the true treasure in Christ, but how the Lord will use that and show them that their intention and their heart was never truly on them. And, and, and the idea was they're mixing how the world looks at it, what the world does, the, the curse and the curse of work and the riches of the world and trying to mix it and trying to uh, mix that flesh, mix law in with grace, with salvation and the riches of Christ, not realizing and seeing the big picture because they don't have eyes to see. These are complaining against the landowner, saying these last men only worked an hour. You already have the heart wrong. You made them equal to us. Oh, who have borne the burdens of the heat of the day. Oh, you did, huh? Okay. Um, let me see. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 real quick. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And obviously we know men transfers to women as well. So women don't have an out as well. This is both for the ungodly, those who don't believe, men and women, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. It's funny, these same people too, a type of the same people will try and stand for the power, but they stand there looking uh, ludicrous, looking hysterical, not to obviously take away the judgment that's coming upon them because of what they're doing to the children, what they're doing, the gospel message, but how they think that it's all about the power and reality, how it's opposite. It's, it's the power by what he has done. It's by what he done on the cross at Calvary and what he continues today and who he is. That's the power and salvation alone. But they want to look at it as how the... They turn it into a worldly view. And in reality, and they do it because they don't see the true power, it makes them look ridiculous. And from such people, turn away. Four of this sort are those who creep into households and make captive of gullible women, also men as well. Women are not taken away from this, neither are men. Loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Sad. Made him equal to us. It's by the Holy Spirit. It's the nature being a child. Oh, he's a child of God. She's a child of God, huh? Oh. Well, what makes you? You know, what makes you so? What Just because you've been having the idea that you work, that you serve, huh? Instead of the one who already finished it for you, huh? It's not a have to. I, it's it's a get to. But apparently not to, th not to them. Notice how thankful the one even just the thief on the cross. Not looking at it. Not thinking about what's to come. What they can get out of it. Because they already have everything. They're thankful. Just making sure I didn't kind of miss everything. I wrote down some stuff here. I just wanted to um, make sure. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Okay. They complain against the landowner saying these last men. Okay. Sorry. But he answered one of them and said, friend, friend too. That's another thing. One who hired them, one who took their burdens, took their burdens, took the heat of the day, died for them, gave them life and life more abundantly. Even after all that complaining, twisting, turning the gospel, say, 
going against a brother and he still calls him friend. That's true love. He says, I am doing you no wrong. Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? In other words, that wage that will buy you food, buy you water, buy you housing, and even maybe a little bit more depending where you're at. For the time being, just for the time being, the idea is just life, the Holy Spirit. Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius for the same thing? Did you not agree? Have salvation except the same as the thief on the cross? Who's, you not you know, stop trying to add and take away and make it what it never was and what you, what you can get out of it, how you can interpret it and what you try and get from it. Because it's not about you. It's about the Lord God. It's about the Lord Jesus. Now take what's yours and go your way. So understand too, that's now life. It's obviously still the reference, you know, not to lose salvation. I wish to give you, it says, I wish to give to you this last man is the same of you. It's life. Understand too, this, just, just go your way. Go sit in the back corner, calm down, you know, just e easy. Go your way. Take that what you agreed and just, I wish to give this last man the same as you. So understand too how loving, how um, peaceful the, the landowner still is through the midst of this. So, um, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your I evil because I am good? So that's how I have it all wrong. It's the I. The eyes of the window to the soul. What are they focusing on? What are they looking on? The world instead of Christ. They already had everything. But it's not lawful. The one who fulfilled the law. The one who it's all his anyway. What are you trying to do? You're trying to steal it. Trying to twist it. Trying to take what was never yours and oh, And be unthankful, ungrateful. Instead of the one who, who it is. The one who paid for it. The one who's to give. It's his to give anyway. It's all his. And just be easy. You haven't gotten there. How do you know what's to come yet? You don't even know. But because of your eye, what you're focused on, the eye of the window of the soul, which is the heart, because your eye is evil, because you're wicked, it's because Christ is so good. He says, or is your eye, eye evil because I am good? He says, so the last will be the first and the first last for many are called, but few are chosen. So we see that this is life and it's him who calls. He's the one who we're called and it's by the Holy Spirit. So we see those who try and twist it, make it about, you know, law going, and going against law, making him go against the law, trying to twist him instead of the one who gave it all to him, the one who's, it's all his anyway. He's the one who fulfilled it. Can I not do what I wish with my own things? Or is your art, is your eye evil because I am good? So then, also too, uh, you're fine. Ungrateful, go sit in the back corner. Come here, you know, somebody who will be grateful for it, who doesn't look at it like that and doesn't have the idea and the mindset and the heart set on what's never theirs and it's never theirs and the wrong intention to begin with because if they don't want it, they don't want it. Just go sit in the back room until you figure out what it is you truly had. As you will. For many are called, but few are chosen. So, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and just stop right there. Love the word, man. I love parables so much. There's so much to take out of it. So much that we can always just apply it to our life. It's so amazing. Word of God so powerful, man. You guys already know. Boom. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much, Lord. I thank you for your word. Thank you for helping me and helping us through these parables, Lord. We know and you know that it's not the carnal mind or the flesh that I could ever do so. And I just thank you for speaking to us, Lord. Thank you uh, for your Holy Spirit, for just guiding us, guiding me. And uh, I just glorify you, Lord, and I thank you. I thank you for your children. I thank you for allowing us to take your word and to apply it to our life and to see it in, in our life, to see how it affects us and affect others around us. And it's because of you. It's because of your word. And 
I just thank you, Lord. I thank you so much because in you there's true peace and there's there's true rest, true assurance, and it's because of you and it's because of the Holy Spirit and what you've done for us. And you are the treasure, you are everything, and it's because you gave your life. It's because of your bloodshed and it's because you continue to show it and continue to prove it every day because we have you, we have everything and everything in you. And I just love you so much and I just I just thank you for your family, Lord. I thank you for the children. And I just thank you for being with us and keeping us strong, keeping us assured, knowing that you're with us and that you're watching and you're right there. You're not going to go anywhere, never going to leave them, and that they're going to be with you forever, Lord. Thank you for your holy name. I love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Right on, guys. So I'm going to go crash and get to bed. And, uh, you know, I'll, Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, I'll see you the next day. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, pray you guys have a good rest of your night. Good morning. And. I'll see you soon.